you live in the city, you're considering raising quail, you're wondering, is it a good idea or not? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And today we're standing in my front yard. I'm going to take some time to tell you why I think quail are the perfect livestock for backyards in the city. And I'm standing in the front yard because I want to show you guys just what I mean by living in the city. And hopefully you can see this behind me. This is a typical city block. Houses stacked right next to each other all the way down the road. Let me take you over here. I'll show you this direction. All right, so this is the road in front of my house that runs right in front of it. And you can see houses right next to each other that way. If we turn this way, you can see it just looks like a typical city road. I mean, this is not country living. This is the city. Let me take you in the backyard and we'll show you what I got set up. All right, so we're standing in my backyard now and you can see it's probably a pretty typical, maybe slightly larger than a normal backyard, back to the fence row back there. I'm incredibly lucky. Um, had the opportunity to buy the lot behind me, so I own the lot behind me, the lot right beside it as well. So I have a lot more land than probably the typical city dweller does. But you can see my quail hutch is way back there. I'm gonna take you up close and show them. They don't take up much room at all. You can easily do that in a very small, small area. Let me take you back and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, so this is my main quail hutch right here. I have a couple of them set up and I'm, I go a little bit more so than what you would actually have to do. This is a much bigger cage than what you'd actually need, but even with this size cage, this is uh, six foot long by three foot wide, and it's about, uh, I don't know, what is that, about six feet tall. And that's just so I can have a roof that I can kind of set things on over here. You could, it's only, the cage itself is only 18 inches tall, so you can get away with a much smaller cage than what I've got right here. And I've got about 20 birds in this hutch right here. You could stack them much more densely than that. This is one of the reasons why I feel like quail are perfect for the backyard city homestead because they take up so, so little room. You really only need about one square foot of cage space per bird in order to raise them. So if you had a small uh, flock, a breeding set, like four hens and one male is typical four hens, five hens to one rooster, that's a typical breeding set. So you could easily fit that in a two by two cage. So a two foot by two foot cage will fit comfortably four birds, but you can stretch it to five, no problem whatsoever. So you can build stacking cages in your garage if you want to, or right up against the side of your house, two foot square, and that's all the room they're gonna take up. They only need to be about 18 inches tall, that's it. So th you can get quite a few, and I'll take you over in a minute and I'll show you some stacking cages that I used for a while, take up a very small space. Okay, we got this opened up. You can see the birds. Some of them are molting. They look a little bit sickly right now. They're not sick. They're just uh, going through their molt. They'll be growing those feathers back and look pretty good. But these are, uh, these are what Caternix quail look like. And there's a lot of different colors of them. You can get whites and it Italians. These are considered a jumbo brown, a jumbo farrow bird. Um, here's the great thing about these. Unlike chickens, if you live in the city, you can have chickens that will produce eggs but you're gonna have a hard time actually incubating those eggs because you can't usually have roosters in the city. I've got four or five male roosters, or male quail in here, roosters, and it's no problem with quail. They do crow, but they don't crow that loud. They don't make that much noise. I'm right next to my neighbor's yard, right next to it. His backyard's just, I mean, I, I can almost touch it. You know, it's right there. And uh, he, not an issue at all. He's never once complained about the birds making noise. Didn't even realize they were back here for the longest time until he happened to come out his back gate for something and then saw the hutches over here and got curious and asked about them. That was it. No complaints from the neighbors whatsoever on the sound. Um, so that's one of the benefits is you can have roosters so you can get fertile eggs. That means you can incubate the eggs and you can produce your own meat in the city. And that's something that's pretty rare with, uh, with backyard livestock. Another benefit is you do get eggs out of these guys. Let me see if I've got any eggs to show you this morning or this afternoon so far. Well, I don't have any eggs out here right now. I've already collected for the day, but uh, you know, their eggs are smaller. Their eggs are about, oh, it takes about four to five of them to, to match the size of a chicken egg, but they taste just like a regular egg. And in a lot of ways, they're a little bit better. There's all kinds of uh, health benefits to eating the eggs. Of course, you really have to eat them raw to get all those health benefits, but um, they are good eggs. They're good for eating. We primarily, I don't buy chicken eggs anymore. I, I simply just, I get more eggs out of these birds than I can eat, and um, I'm overwhelmed with eggs. So some of them I incubate, I hatch out. 
the great thing about that is those birds will grow out at an incredibly fast rate. So by the time, from the time they hatch to the time they're ready to butcher, if you're going to use them for meat, it's eight weeks. Eight weeks is all it takes for them to get full size and you're ready to butcher and you've got meat on the table. So a very quick turnaround with that. You can hear one of the roosters crowing right there, not incredibly loud. All right, so you can see um, there's a lot of benefits over keeping quail as opposed to maybe chickens, for example. Um, one is the space. They don't require much space. As far as what to feed them, um, I've got these feeders here. It's just a big Tupperware top type container with some holes cut out. Fill the feed up to about here. They stick their head in and eat it. That minimizes the waste a little bit. Um, I feed them a game bird starter. And you want to look for either a game bird starter or a turkey starter. High protein, over 22% if you can get it. And uh, that's it. Um, it's just a crumble feed. I don't have to grind it up, nothing. It's just that's what they eat from the time that they get out of the egg to the time that they go to the uh, freezer if they're going to go. And as far as how these guys handle uh, cage life, they're well adapted to cage life. They do fantastic in here. Um, I do have a little section over here that's kind of closed off. You can see that provides them with the wind block. So in the winter time, I don't have to do any additional insulation on this hutch. And we get pretty cold winters down below zero on a fairly frequent basis. So uh, there's no additional, nothing I have to do. They get in there and block the wind if they need to. They hang out out here most of the time. They handle the cold very, very well. Very hardy birds. These are a couple of uh, stacking cages that I used for quite a while, and uh, they worked out great. I've got videos on how to make those. Actually, I'll put a link. I think it's up in this corner, but it may be up in that corner. I always get mixed up on how that goes. I'll put a link up there. You can go back and watch that video if you need instructions on how to build this. Pretty simple. It's just a PVC frame. The cage is made out of mostly hardware cloth with like rabbit cage wire for the front to give it some, uh, to make it more sturdy so it won't collapse in on itself. And uh, they worked great. And, and these are, I think these are two foot by two foot cages. You can easily house, uh, you know, a breeding set in here, five birds, uh, four hens, one, one rooster. And you can stack them up. So you, I did three high. So I had two sets that were breeders. And then the bottom cage was a grow out pen. So as I bred, and as I got those fertile eggs, hatched out the babies, and then I would just throw them in here. And you can get a ton of babies in here. Um, you can probably get easily 20 birds in this little cage right here because you're only keeping them in there until they, you know, they only, they grow so fast that they're tiny when you put them in there at a couple of weeks old, three weeks old about, put them in here. And then they grow out so fast that they're only getting overcrowded really for like the last week, week and a half. Um, and then you've got to, you know, you got to decide what you're going to do with them if you're going to send them to the freezer or whatever. But this worked really well. Had this set up in my garage. The one thing I will say about raising them inside the garage is that you're going to do a lot of cleaning. I had little trays that sat in here that, to catch the droppings. And you've got to empty those pretty much every day or they just pile up on you. I mean, it's an amazing amount of waste that those guys produce. Also, they're going to throw feathers everywhere. So you get dust and feathers all over the place. And uh, I really prefer to have them outside. They do so fine in the winter and stuff. There's no reason to have them inside as long as you provide them with a wind block. But you could do this same type of thing in an outdoor cage. Just uh, you would need to put some kind of roof on it and some kind, something down the sides to provide a wind block. And uh, this would work just fine. So again, this is a two foot by two foot square. You know, you can go as high as you want to go and you can house, you know, 10, uh, you know, at least 10 birds in two cages. And if you add on, it just multiplies five or so every time. And these worked great. All right, so while we're talking about waste, let's talk about how you deal with that living in the city. Um, I just let the droppings just fall to the ground and uh, they just collect here. And then I empty them out every, uh, it takes about six months usually before I empty them out. Um, or I should say empty, I shovel them up and then take them back to the compost pile. Um, but it's really not that big of a deal right here. Now, if this was right up against the side of my house, I probably wouldn't let them just fall directly to the ground. I would string up maybe a tarp system or something like that, let them fall into there, and then I could rake them kind of from there into a bucket, kind of the way I have my rabbits set up, which if you've seen my videos before, you'd understand that. If not, then, uh, well, you'd have to set something up here. Probably don't want to catch the uh, droppings and empty them out. But really, as far as the smell goes or any of that kind of stuff, it, there's no smell right now. I can't smell it at all. Um, and part of that's probably because I live around here and I'm used to it. But the other part is they don't, there's not really a lot of smell to the droppings unless they're wet. So now there are times like right after a heavy rain, I will smell the droppings. Every great once in a while I can smell them from the house. But 
it just depends. The wind's got to be blowing the right way, and it's got to be very, very wet out in order for that to happen. My neighbors have not once complained about the odor of the quail, though, so it's not been that big of a deal. And if you kept it cleaned up on a regular basis, again, as long as you keep it dry, it doesn't smell much at all. All right, and as far as how prolific these guys are, the females, as long as they have enough light, they need 14 hours a day of light in order to continue laying on a regular basis. So in the fall, in the winter, when the days start getting shorter, you do need to add some supplemental light to keep them laying. It needs to be 14 hours a day. As long as they have that, the hens will lay pretty much an egg a day. As long as the roosters are crowing, they're going to be breeding the hens, um, and you're going to get fertile eggs, and you're going to be able to incubate those and hatch them out. So you figure an egg a day from these birds, there's about 20 in here, so I get probably, I get like 15, 16 eggs a day. You can save those eggs up for a week, you know, put them in a cooler or something like that, not in your refrigerator, but you do want to keep them cool uh, between about 70 degrees and 40 degrees, somewhere between there. I find that I just put them in a cooler with an ice pack, change it out every day. You can keep them for up to seven days. So, and before you start incubating, before the uh, hatch rate really starts to decline. So I can collect eggs every day for about seven days and get probably, uh, let's see the math on that, let's make it easy, let's say if there were 10 eggs a day, just make it simple, 10 eggs a day, that's 70 eggs that I'm going to be able to incubate in the incubator. And now don't expect to get 100% hatch rate out of that, especially if you've never incubated before, it'll take you a time or two. I have videos on all of that to walk you through it and show you exactly how to do it put a link right up here again, or again, maybe it's on that side. Don't remember which side it comes up on, but I'll put a link to my playlist on how to store and hatch eggs. You can learn exactly how to do that. But you should expect probably, let's say you get a terrible hatch rate, 50% hatch rate. So in a week, you can collect uh, uh, 70 eggs. You're gonna get about 35 birds out of that if you have a 50% hatch rate. In eight weeks, you'll have 35 birds that you can butcher and put in the freezer. It generally takes about two birds to feed one person. So I eat about two at a meal with sides, with other things with it. So out of that, you're going to get, what is that? Uh, we said 35 birds. So half of that is 17, roughly 17 meals out of those birds in eight weeks. And if you rotate your hatches just right, you can have quail pretty, pretty regularly on a regular basis. As far as what they taste like, if you're familiar with dove, or, um, well, I'm probably not familiar with pigeon if you're not familiar with quail, but dove, pigeon, quail, they're all very, very similar. It's a darker meat. It's not a white meat like chicken. It's got more flavor than what chicken does. They're very lean. There's not as much fat on them as there is a chicken. Um, so if you're not careful, you can overcook the meat, cause it to be tough a little bit. But for the most part, it's a very tasty, almost everybody likes quail meat. Everybody I fed it to likes it. I think it kind of has a Similar to, um, and I don't want to say this and scare anybody off, but it's similar to liver in a sense. Liver has that very minerally earthy kind of flavor to it, and it's nowhere near that strong in the meat, but it does have that similar kind of minerally earthy kind of uh, flavor to it. Um, but it's very, very mild. It's not like, it's not going to, you're not going to eat that and think that you're eating liver. So all in all, these are pretty easy birds to raise. They're perfect for a backyard city homestead because they just don't take up a lot of room. They produce a ton of eggs, a ton of meat. Very easy to care for, very hardy. Um, there's just really not a whole lot to it. But if you have questions, if you're new to raising quail, I have a video that covers just about every topic that, that can be said about quail, everything that you'd want to know. You can go back on my homepage, uh, my YouTube homepage, look under the uh, Caternix quail heading, and you'll see probably a couple hundred videos in there addressing just about everything. If you have a specific question or a specific topic you'd like to see covered, leave that in a comment below. I will do my best to answer that for you. Hopefully you learned something in this video, and as always, God bless.